If you have an AMD Ryzen CPU, then hopefully today's video is going to serve you well in giving you some useful information on how, especially you can get the most FPS when it comes to gaming. And this is FPS that essentially you can download, but it's not typical of what you would expect in that it mainly has to do with Windows 11, especially when we compare it to Windows 10. Now, in my previous video, this is in the title part two, in part one, I'll put the link to the video up here. I really recommend you guys watch that. We looked at core isolation, which was a setting that's enabled by default in Windows 11 23H2. So if you do a fresh install of Windows and you don't change many settings in your BIOS, this is actually gonna be enabled by default and it's going to affect your FPS when you install your games. We recommend turning this off at Tech yes City, especially if you're a single end desktop user and you like gaining more FPS. Though the scariest thing about that setting was that it affected the Ryzen 9000 series CPU that we did the testing on much more than it affected the Ryzen 7000 series CPUs and also the Intel CPU when we tested that. So that was surprising to see because it means that if you're going out and getting a Ryzen 9000 CPU, then you are definitely gonna to wanna to turn this setting off because we saw from a best case to worst case example in Cyberpunk, for instance, we were losing close to 30% performance just off this one setting alone. Though there is some good news here, and that is if you're on Windows 10, that setting is disabled by default. And also if you decide to download the Windows Insider Preview, 26100, this setting is also disabled too. And the reason I said 26100 is because that is the build that has core isolation off by default. And in today's video, I also did test out another build. It was like an alpha build called Canary and it's a 27695. And the unfortunate thing about that build was that the core isolation was then re-enabled by default and we also got less FPS. So before we even move into the gaming benchmarks, if you're on Windows 11, you'll wanna actually manually check for these settings after a big update on your computer or when you first install your computer. That of course is, is core isolation disabled? Then there's the next problem to worry about and that's the Windows 11 scheduler itself, where AMD made a post on the community blog site stating that the 9000 series wasn't doing too well in Windows 11 and they released a scheduler update for Windows 23H2, which then fixed up the scheduler problems and essentially enabled it to work like the Windows Insider build on the 24H2. But for all intents and purposes for today's video, we are going to be calling 24H2 the patched version of Windows where the performance between a 23H2 that was patched and the 24H2 were virtually identical in terms of FPS. It was really just a matter of variance between runs of one or two FPS. However, we're gonna be calling this in the graphs 23H2, which means that the patch hasn't been applied, then 24H2 will have that patch applied. And then lastly, of course, in the graphs, we've got Windows 10, trusty Windows 10, 22H2, and that's got no fancy updates or any core isolation settings changed. It's just default settings. And you're gonna see that Windows 10 is definitely what you're gonna to wanna to use if you're on Ryzen 9000, but also maybe if you're on Ryzen 7000 and other AMD CPUs. But let's get into all those results right after today's video sponsor. If you want to get rid of this annoying activate windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD keys has you covered for as little as 15 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Also works for windows 11 pro Two. links in description below. Welcome back to tech. Yes city. And in today's benchmarks, we've got two games straight away that show the biggest differences in terms of FPS in our previous video on part one. So we're gonna be focusing on those first with also more CPUs included into the mix. Then later on in the video, we'll show you guys four different benchmarks of just Ryzen 9700X benchmarks, but also all the tests were done on ASRock motherboards, in particular for the AMD side, B650E, Tai Chi Lite, as well as 6200 megahertz CL28G skill with an Infinity Fabric tuned on all the AMD CPUs 
on AM5 to 2067. This is, I find, the most easiest settings to lock in and it gives you a nice little performance boost over say a default 6000 Expo on 2000 Infinity Fabric. So the first game that we're gonna test here is Cyberpunk 2077, which showed the biggest differences in yesterday's video. And lo and behold, it also shows the biggest differences in today's video, where we've got that core isolation turned off on 23H2 there, but it's still, you're gaining quite a substantial amount of FPS going with the patch or going to 24H2, but after that, we've still got Windows 10 coming out on top. Though it is interesting to note in this particular game that the 9000 series is the most affected by this patch. So in other words, if you've got a Ryzen 7000 series chip, you're not gonna gain as much FPS on Windows 11 with this patch applied. But even then, if we look at the Windows 10 results, it's winning on everything here that's AMD. If we go over to the Intel side, the Windows 11 install is winning both with the patch and without the patch, it doesn't really affect it. But as we already discussed in yesterday's video, Windows 11 is better suited towards Intel CPUs. But a little bit more on that later, let's get on to the next title here, which is Gears of War 5. A game where I saw massive discrepancies across the net. People were saying there was 35% uplifts from Windows 11 alone on 9000 series chips, but when I tested here, I did not see those kinds of differences. The best case scenario to the worst case scenario was around a 22% drop in performance from the 9700X on Windows 10 down to core isolation turned on with no patch on 23H2. Here's where with the patch applied, we gained some FPS, but again, Windows 10 was still coming out on top of a patched 24H2 in this particular title, and that was the case for all the AMD CPUs here. Going over to the Intel CPU, the 14700KF, it was also a similar story as Cyberpunk 2077. So really nothing to see there. But what I can conclude from those two games alone is that AMD's Ryzen 9000 series really got hammered by Windows 11, and in particular, the scheduler. So if I was to make a guess as to why this difference is, it would be Windows 11 scheduler simply being inferior for AMD Ryzen CPUs than that of Windows 10. So let's just keep the numbers flowing in as well as bringing the side-by-side -side comparisons, AKA the receipts for you guys, and with Age of Mythology showing that there wasn't much of a difference between the patch. And if we look at Windows 10, still coming out on top here for our 9700X. Moving over now to Baldur's Gate 3, this is where the patch made a bigger difference than Age of Mythology. But again, Windows 10 still coming out on top. And moving over to Far Cry 6, it was actually probably the biggest difference outside of Cyberpunk as well as Gears of War 5. Uh, actually, the next title does have quite a big difference too. So the patch did make a difference in Far Cry 6 in regaining some of that FPS. Though on to Harry Potter, the next game here was also in the tune of a little bit over 10% performance regained via applying this patch on either Windows 23H2 or using Windows 24H2. So after looking at those benchmarks, it's time to just sum things up and I'm going to sort of just talk casually here for maybe five minutes or so, maybe a bit longer, and just give you guys all my thoughts and opinions on this whole situation. The first thing is, the Windows 11 scheduler is simply been optimized for Intel Older Lake, that's 12th generation, as well as 13th and 14th generation CPUs. So in other words, if you've got one of those CPUs, you might wanna consider jumping on Windows 11. But even then, I was using a 13900K in my main system a while ago, and I just found Windows 11 to be much more sluggish and less responsive than Windows 10. That was the main reason I changed back over a year ago to using Windows 10. And then my benchmark suite followed. And of course, I've just been using that ever since, hence why these videos have sort of popped up in your feed and why I'm coming into a sort of surprised reaction looking at this whole debacle unfold in relation to the Ryzen CPUs, especially the 9000 series CPUs. But on that note, if we look at today's results, Windows 10 cannot be matched by Windows 11 for the Ryzen CPUs. And actually any of the results I did here today, Windows 10 was coming out on top for all the Ryzen CPUs in all the benchmarks. In particular, 
for the 9700X, it was actually doing a lot better. So something is going on here where Microsoft, I don't know if AMD haven't worked with Microsoft enough to update Windows 11 properly for the Ryzen 9000 series because all we really got is a short post on a gaming community blog from AMD. But one thing we know is, is that it works better on Windows 10 and the performance is quite impressive compared to the previous generation CPUs, especially the 7700X, where that CPU also runs better on Windows 10 than it does on Windows 11. So what we've got here is a situation that would I would just call complete poo. There's just poo flying around everywhere. It's getting slung at Microsoft, it's getting slung at AMD for their marketing department. And I kind of, in ways I feel sorry for the developers of the AMD uh, Zen 5 architecture. They've put in a lot of work and then they're just out there seeing all this poo being slung on the 9000 series when I thought it was actually a pretty decent upgrade. And I think the biggest criticism would be the price and the value compared to 7000 series at current street prices. That's what I've said in my 9700X review, my 9600X review, and I'm pretty sure my 9950X review will be the same, but stay tuned for that. Though also I agree that the Zen 5 should have really been called Zen 4 Plus because there are things that are very similar. For instance, the memory control of the IMC is virtually identical from what I'm testing here to the 7000 series. So 9000 IMC, pretty much the same as the 7000 series IMC. So Microsoft, you can definitely do better. AMD, you can definitely do better with your marketing. I think we can conclude those two things, but also it kind of bothers me a bit that we saw all these results where people are just going crazy posting these Windows 11 results and they're seeing that a 9700X is performing worse than a 7700X. And I'm just like, when you're benchmarking, how do you not look at those results and go, this is not right. Like I'm sure AMD didn't intend to release a newer architecture that's slower than the previous architecture. Yet then you go through with your review and you release these results that are just really, I think, not indicative of what the true potential of that product is. For instance, if I released a product, I'd be upset if I saw reviews like that on my particular product. It just, you've spent a lot of time and effort making this product only for, I guess, people to rush out the reviews and wanna get them out on day one, instead of just taking a bit of extra time and, and just saying, all right, I'm gonna delay it maybe a day or maybe two days and just really just do some extra testing on this just to make sure my results are right. But I think in all ways there's mistakes all around and perhaps it's got to do with this rushed culture that's come in, especially in the last 10 years. We've noticed that even myself, right? I even said in this video, more time strapped. And as we're more uh, strapped for time, we just tend to wanna to rush things out and get things out. But for me personally though, I do know that time's important, but at the same time, I like to sit back and not stress about things if things need to take another day, another two days, then so be it. I'm in no rush to make mistakes, put it that way. So ultimately in time, raising this awareness and that Windows 11 performance is worse than Windows 10. I do believe it'll get patched even more in the future and it should be non-existent perhaps. But that being said, I really don't want to move towards the direction that Windows 11 is going. For instance, when I installed it recently, I got three different ads. I think it was Microsoft Cloud, Microsoft 365 and then Microsoft Game Pass when I'm installing an OS. Then after that, you've also got now TPM where I have to put a password in my computer. And I don't wanna waste time when I boot up my computer having to put in a password every time. People around my house here, we've got security at our house. Why do I need it on my computer, right? <laughs> I'd be more concerned if someone broke into my house and tried to steal my car or something like that. Not my computer. Anyhow, when it comes to these things, I think choice is what matters. If people want to put a password on their PC, they should be able to do so. If people don't want to put a password like me on their PC, they should be able to do so. If they don't want to log into a Microsoft account to use their OS like we've traditionally done, they shouldn't have to do that. And that's what's been forced with Windows 11. And sorry, we've gone a little bit off tangent on the gaming FPS and the performance, but I feel like there's just so much I wanted to rant about towards the end of this video and it needs to be said, and I wanna get it off my chest so we can move forward and know that I'm gonna be on Windows 10 at least for the foreseeable future. And that's where my testing is gonna be done. So if you're asking, how did I get these results? 
I'll not just show you guys the receipts on the screen in terms of video gameplay footage, I'll also be happy to tell you that I'm using Windows 10 as well because I just think it's a better OS, at least for individual gamers. Anyhow guys, with all that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comments section below what you think of this whole Windows 10, Windows 11 debacle for the Ryzen 9000 series. And love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And also if you want me as well to cross-reference results with other outlets, I'm happy to do that. I would like more transparency in this whole tech scene. That's something that we should all be I guess on the same page about is just getting along and getting you guys the best information when it comes to these products and ultimately giving you the best recommendations. Anyhow with that said I'll catch you in another tech video very soon if you stayed this far and you're enjoying the content as always be sure to hit that like button hit that sub button on the way out and I'll see you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.